Okay, if your head isn't hurting yet, maybe it should be. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're here to talk about lookup principles. I hope you like the class so far. So we're going we're gonna to continue on now. We're going to introduce to you probably the number two most used transformation in Informatica. It's known as the lookup. The number one is the expression object. And, of course, tied for second place with the lookup is the filter. So there we go. So let's talk a little bit about the lookup. This is a basic introduction to the lookup itself. There is something called a connected lookup and an unconnected lookup. And then we have options for cached and uncached lookup. So we can see here we've got a nature around the lookup we need to discuss. So what's the first piece of lookup? Well, conditionally find data by one or more key. So it's equivalent to an outer join, if you will, to a child table. That's what the function of the lookup is about, is to go out to the database and find data that exists. Now, there's a special way that that works, and of course it works with data and index cache. So we're going to talk about the caching in another piece or another section of this training. So in essence, it's an outer join capacity, uh, um, an unusual index match. In this case, in, this is the one place in Informatica that you can actually have null equal null be true. So, you know, that's a very important thing. So with the lookup is the only place that that occurs. Uh, in this case, you can use a connected and a cached and you can actually update the cache in stream. That means that as data flows through, if you're using a cache and it's the lookup sitting in the stream, in the processing stream, it can take data as it comes in and it can actually issue updates against the data cache on disk. Keep in mind, and now you think, well, gee, that's really powerful. I want to use that all the time. Don't. That will slow down the performance of your lookup dramatically because it introduces I.O. and more and more swapping. The more data comes in, the more updates you do, the more RAM swapping you get, the more I.O. you get, the slower it's going to go. The only time that that is really, really, really fast, you guessed it, when all of your data that is supposed to be in cache is sitting in RAM cache and none of it is on disk. So that would be extremely quick for you. So limiting the lookup caches and uh, sizing the amount of data. Newbie mistake number 19 is caching so much data in the lookup and then only using 10% of the data in the cache and then uh, uh, spending or wasting all of that time to bring all that data down into the lookup cache and not even touching it. So don't make that mistake, okay? So lookup modes, cache on startup. We're going to talk about the caching coming up. Pre-cached mode, uncached mode. These are the different ways the lookup functions. And the two types, two basic types of the lookup are connected and unconnected. We're going to introduce you here to the connected lookup architecture first. We'll talk about unconnected in another lesson. So let's get to the connected lookup architecture. Connected lookup architecture basically means that for each row that you have at least one field going into the lookup as hooked up as indicated here in the mapping, and you have at least one field or more going downstream from the lookup. This is what we call a connected lookup. It's also known as in-stream lookup. So this is what we want. Now, if a match is found, if it looks up the data, you can actually pass more than one field downstream. So it goes into the cache, finds a match, it can pull a whole row of data, and it can match it and push it downstream. So this is the way that the lookup architecture works. Now, if no match is found at all, then it will return a null, in this case, in both the name and the address field. So let's move on here. The lookup transformation looks a little bit like this. We've got the lookup values in the database table or the flat file. Provides data to other components in the mapping, right? This is the lookup. It's an outer join. We have a number of different settings here. We've got a port name. What's a port name? A field name. It's a column name. Those are all synonymous terms in case you missed it. We've got the data types, the precisions, and the scales. And, of course, our familiar input, output. And now we have two new columns here, one called L for lookup and one called R for return value. The lookup, in an unconnected sense, can act as a function. So if you've ever written a function in a programmatic language, it returns a value. 
And so that's the way the lookup works. If you turn on unconnected lookup, in other words, you pull it away from the stream, and I'll show you one of those in a minute, uh, then it can return one and only one value. And so that is the return field or return port that, that you can have. The L is the lookup cache. These are all the fields that are actually cached. Now, I want to return to the previous slide for just a second. I want to talk about this note over here because here I have a lot of information. I've got city, state, zip, country, and none of that is hooked up downstream. Yet, it's marked for L in the lookup cache. Informatica over the years has optimized the lookup logic so that if it's connected and these fields are not attached, it will not put them in the cache. So it will actually optimize and squeeze your lookup down to only those fields that are physically connected downstream. So that's a pretty neat thing. The other thing that we've got there is something called associated port. That's for advanced lookups. We'll talk about that later. Uh, ignore null on input. These are the updatable lookup fields and attributes. And we'll, again, we'll cover that later. The same with ignore in comparison. So. This is, this is an interesting point. Now, whatever's marked as an O or an output field, if you make this lookup reusable, if you make it reusable, even though you don't hook up the fields downstream, the law no longer applies. If it's reusable and you bring it into your mapping, if it's marked as an output, it's going to be in the cache, whether or not you, you take it downstream. So this is a lookup optimization, and you have to watch out for reusable fields. With that, let's take a look at the software here. I'm going to show you two types of uh, lookups. I'm going to show you an in-stream lookup, and then I'm going to show you an unconnected lookup. So let's go find a mapping here that does that. Uh, we'll go up here, source to stage, and we'll open up uh, this particular lookup. So the first one I'm going to show you is an example of an unconnected lookup. How do I know it's unconnected? I can see it right here. This is a reusable, unconnected lookup. There is nothing going in and nothing coming out. If I open that lookup, uh, into an edit mode, and I look at the ports, you can see uh, that I've got, excuse me, a return port. So I've got a sequence number coming in, and I've got a load date coming out. And so this is the way an unconnected lookup works, and we'll cover that in detail again. But we've got an expression that calls the unconnected lookup. And in this particular case, if the lookup hasn't been called, it goes and function, it, you, it applies a function call, calls the lookup, returns the value to this expression, and sets up the, the load date for this mapping. So that's an example of a unconnected lookup. Let's take a look at a connected lookup. Let's see if we can find one here. I should have a couple of them in this folder. We're loading a data vault. So let's take a look at uh, this particular hub load. We have an unconnected lookup, so so far so good. Let's take a look, see if we've got a connected lookup. There is a connected lookup. So we've got a lookup of existing listings and incoming data, so you can see the stream connectors and the stream connectors, and that um, is the way that we work with connected and unconnected lookups.